Okay, so today's uh, lecture is going back to thermodynamics. And I reserve this lecture for the end because some of the concepts are, are difficult. Okay? Now, this lecture is supposed to inspire you to study more thermodynamics, all right? So don't worry about the derivations of equations. Yeah, more inspired. <laughs> okay. Even more inspired, okay? So there's no way I would ask you to derive the equations of quasar chemical theory in the context of an exa examination. But I would expect you to explain what a quasar chemical model is. So I want you to focus on the concepts. There's no need to take notes, you already have notes. And just relax. Right, so we did three kind, uh, two kinds of solution models. The first one was the ideal solution, where all the atoms are distributed at random because the enthalpy of mixing is zero. Uh, so it's easy to calculate the total number of AA bonds, AB bonds, and so forth, and therefore we can estimate accurately the entropy of mixing. And the only contribution to the free energy of mixing comes from the entropy of mixing. The regular solution model, we again calculate the entropy of mixing using exactly the same equation as in the ideal solution, even though the enthalpy of mixing is finite. So that's obviously wrong. It's an approximation that we no longer have atoms distributed at random, and yet we assume that we can calculate the entropy of mixing, assuming a random distribution of atoms. Now, we're going to deal today with the quasar chemical model, which doesn't make that assumption. So we've got to count things, even though the atoms are not distributed at random, and we have a finite uh, enthalpy of mixing. And there are various levels of quasar chemical theory, and to the model that I'm going to deal with today assumes that there is a non-random distribution of atoms, but there's a random distribution of pairs of atoms. Now, I can make a higher level approximation. I can say there's a non-random dis uh, non -random distribution of atoms, non-random distribution of pairs, but a random distribution of triplets, and so on. I can make the model as accurate as I like. Today, I'm going to deal with a non-random distribution of atoms so that we can calculate the entropy of mixing accurately, but we'll assume that the entity that we are placing is pairs of atoms, and the pairs of atoms are independent. Okay, so just, just to summarize again, um, in the regular solution model, the atoms are treated as independent, so they are randomly distributed. And you can regard this regular solution model as an approximation to what I'm going to teach you, where we call it the zeroth approximation. So in the first approximation of the quasar chemical model, the atoms are not distributed at random, but pairs of atoms are treated as if they are distributed randomly on a lattice. So that allows us to get a more accurate calculation of the entropy of mixing quite an important model which we use routinely in the design of metallic materials. Right, so let's imagine that we have two states of energy. One is this ground state, G0, and a higher level, G1. And at this ground state, I have three of these energy levels. So that's called a degeneracy of three. Okay, so these are the same level of energy, but I can place three particles there. Okay. And the degeneracy for this higher energy level is G1 equals 2. So if I place atoms here and here, then they have the same energy, but I have two states there. So everyone clear about the meaning of degeneracy? Right, so I have a total number N of atoms, and that many are in the higher energy state, and that many are in the ground state, the lowest energy state. So I can write that the number in the ground state, the total number is n naught divided by n equals the degeneracy we have in the ground state, divided by that plus that term, because that many will have been promoted to the higher energy level at a given temperature. Yeah. And similarly, 
we have the number of atoms which are located at a higher energy state. So there's nothing very clever here. We are just distributing particles according to how temperature will promote things to a higher or lower energy level. Could you just to what the, uh, what the degeneracy is? Yeah, so for a given energy, I may have more than one particle I can put onto that energy level. And that's called the degeneracy, the number of particles I can put at a constant energy level. Yeah. If I'm dealing with electrons, I can only put two in every energy level, and even those two have to be of opposite spin. Mm -hmm. But if I'm dealing with, you know, classical particles, then I can sometimes, in the Boltzmann distribution, I can put any number at any energy level. Okay, so this is just a way of distributing atoms at different energy levels. And if I sum all those terms which are in the denominator here, if I sum them all up, then that is called the partition function, the way in which we partition the atoms amongst the different energy levels. So the sum of all the terms in the denominator I'm not generalizing here, I put an subscript i, I could have any number of energy levels and degeneracies, is called the partition function. And you see the importance of this partition function is that if we differentiate it, we can obtain the free energy. Now, we no longer have atoms distributed at random. Because previously, if I wanted to find the number of AA bonds, then I would say it's the probability of finding an A atom multiplied by the probability of finding another A atom, okay, so 1 minus x squared, multiplied by a coordination number and you know the total number of atoms that we have. Okay? I can't do that because now the atoms are not distributed randomly. But we can be sure that the number of AA bonds is equal to half, uh, this is again the coordination number, times the number of A atoms, okay, less the number of AB bonds we have. Yeah. So it, we just remove the number of A atoms which are participating in the AB bonds. I don't know how many AB bonds we have, but this is mathematically correct, right? I take the total number of A atoms which can form a bond, remove from it all the A atoms which are tied to the B atoms, and therefore that gives me the A bonds. There's only one option, if you're not tied to a B atom, is to be tied to an A atom, right? And similarly, the number of BB atoms is the total number of bonds that I can form, less the number of AB bonds that we have because those B atoms which are tied to A atoms don't contribute to B B bonds. Okay. Here we have an answer for the number of A bonds. Here we don't as yet have an answer because I don't know how many A B bonds I have. Sorry, sorry. Yeah? You still use the coordination number? Yes, because I can form bonds in several directions. I was just wondering, if you do know what the coordination number is, yeah. then you must know what's the distribution around each atom, isn't it? No, because the coordination number simply tells me how many bonds I can form. It doesn't tell me what's there. Yeah? Okay. okay. Uh, just to remind you, the definition of binding energy is that we take a pair of atoms which are located an infinite distance apart, we bring them uh, closer and closer, and they may follow this kind of an energy curve and we define this as the binding energy. Okay. Right, so we've got the binding energy per AA bond. Uh, we can work out the total energy of the system as we did previously. Okay. Count the number of AA bonds, BB bonds, AB bonds. Take away from the starting configuration and we get this. Again, this quantity is not yet known but I'm just writing the equation for the total energy, the coordination number, number of uh, AA bonds times the binding energy of AA atoms, number of BB bonds times the binding energy of BB, and so on. So that simplifies to this equation here.
So we don't actually know this quantity as yet. Okay, and we can have many different arrangements of atoms. So we simply substitute into the partition function the energy corresponding to each arrangement. So this is to a particular arrangement, which will have a particular degeneracy. And we have our partition function, which I can express in terms of the <coughs> quantities which we can measure. The omega, epsilon bb, epsilon aa. Right, now, we derived the entropy of mixing when we considered our ideal solution by saying that, look, if I have n atoms, the first atom I can place here. So there are n possible locations on which I can place it. The second I can place at n minus 1 locations, but I could swap these atoms, so I have to divide by 2 factorial, and so on. And when we did that, we ended up with the total number of configurations as capital N factorial, which is the total number of uh, atoms we have, divided by the number of A atoms factorial, number of P atoms factorial. I want you to think about this uh, a little bit more. This is simply the total number of entities we have, atoms in this case. Okay. And this is the total number uh, of those entities which are of A type and of B type. Now what we need to do is we need to take pairs of atoms and put them onto the lattice in many different ways. Okay? And I'm not going to go through the derivation of it, but I want you to note the similarity of G star when you compare with this. Okay? So instead of putting pair atoms onto the lattice, I'm going to put pairs of atoms at random onto the lattice. And just like we have two different kinds of entities here, A and B, when we start putting pairs, we have AA bonds, BB bonds, AB bonds, and BA bonds. So, the corresponding uh, equation I have uh, will have the total number of bonds factorial, total number of pairs I can put factorial, yeah. and these are the factorials of the four different kinds of bonds that I can have. So you can see the similarity with the top equation. Um, to get that equation, do, does that mean that um, a pair occupies one lattice point or a pair of Two lattice points. So, okay. yeah. Now, there's one, one thing different here, okay, if you ignore all the noise here, and that is that I've got an equality sign here and a proportionality sign here. And that's because this is an impossible problem to solve, okay, to put pairs of atoms, because Look at this. If I place an AB bond here, a BB bond here, and a BB bond here, then I have no choice about what happens here. Okay. This is an unsolved problem. How to solve this rigorously. So, this is the reason why I haven't put an equality sign here. I've put a proportionality sign. Whereas atoms, we could place readily. Once we fix three of these bonds, the fourth one is necessarily fixed, isn't it? Yeah. So how do we solve this? Uh, well, we don't actually solve it, we are going to cheat, right? So, supposing that all the atoms are distributed at random, then the G star value, star stands for random distribution, that we get by arranging pairs of atoms, should be the same as we get from this equation. Right? Supposing the atoms are all distributed randomly, then G star here should be exactly the same as G star here. Okay? So all we have to do is normalize using this. So we write a particular configuration is, I've lost the proportional design because I'm now normalizing with respect to this. We set this to be equal to this. That's why we are dividing by this term, multiplying by this term. So I get rid of that problem by normalizing with respect to the random state. Okay. So 
So let, let me just go back again. Okay? It's very easy to see that if I fix these three bonds, there's no way I, I, have indi I can do this bond independently. Okay? So there's a problem. If I have a completely random distribution of atoms, then using this method of placing pairs should give me exactly the same answer as this which we derive for the ideal solution. So if I divide this by this, and I multiply it by the case where the atoms are not at random, then I've normalized that, haven't I? So I'm saying that this is uh, in error by a certain amount, which when I divide by this, and I multiply this term, I correct for that error. Yeah? So let's assume, okay, let me, let me write this down in a more simple way. The G star, which we get from N factorial or N A factorial and B factorial, let's say this is equal to 2, correct? And the G star that I get by arranging pairs of atoms, assuming the atoms are randomly distributed, okay, so this is now for pairs, uh, I get a number which is 1.6. Okay. Then I need to correct this. Okay. Because in general, the atoms are not going to be randomly distributed and I want to calculate G and AB. Okay. So what I do is I calculate G and AB. I get that equal to 1.4, but it's going to be wrong because I can't independently put pairs of atoms. I take that 1.4, multiply it by 2, and divide by 1.6. So I've done a correction, because this 2 and 1.6 should really be the same. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's a normalization. 